Janet in uh, Gustine, California. Am I saying it right, Janet? Yes. Hey, mm-hmm. welcome. What's up? Uh, yeah. Um, you've talked about um, uh, regulated capitalism before as being, you know, acceptable. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've, um, we've tried that. And I'm anti-capitalist. <laughs> I mm-hmm. probably should t- begin by that. Uh, uh, we've tried that. And the oligarchs, capitalist oligarchs, have taken apart, little by little. It's taken them some time, mm-hmm. but they've taken it all apart. What do you think will happen if, they tried, if anybody tries to re-regulate capitalism? They'll take it apart twice as fast. Possibly, I probably. I think we should allow capitalism to die. And I think the left should be talking about this. The, the, the crisis of capitalism is something that, that um, you'll find threaded through several of my books. The crash of 2016 is really big on that. I mean, you know, in 1971, the Powell memo was basically capitalism needs to take over politics. That was Lewis Powell's message, essentially. Yes. And, and they did. And, and they've done that. I mean, you know, they, they, they started in 76 with Lewis Powell authoring the, the uh, Buckley versus Vallejo Supreme Court decision and, and you know, has gone forward in, in a thousand ways ever since then. Uh, what's the, and, and, and most people, you know, really don't understand this. They don't get even what capitalism is, which, you know, is, is a system where, where um, in the investment of capital provides ownership of a business which, uh, you know, can can be run and and produce profits, and those profits can go back to the investors when the investors never actually worked in that business. It's a very different thing than entrepreneurialism. According, according to <laughs> according to Richard Wolff, it's a system that stinks. Yeah, I don't it's disagree. Not even democratic. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's very different than entrepreneurialism, where you know a, a person you know scrapes together enough money to open a, a corner dry cleaning shop or a grocery or whatever, and and they work in it, and their family works in it, and their neighbors do, and you know it's a, it's a very different thing, and so that, that's okay. Small business and and co-ops. I, you know, Richard Wolff's main main recommendation for this is co-ops. And I don't disagree with that at all. It's the last chapter in my book, uh, Threshold, The Crisis of Western Civilization, is, uh-huh. is calling for that. You know, Louise and I went over to, to Spain and looked at uh, Mondragon in, in the uh, Basque region. And yeah. uh, it's the largest non-capitalist. Uh, it's a multi-billion, I think it's $40 billion or something a year enterprise. It's huge. And they've got uh, uh, pieces all over the world. What, but, but Janet... And nobody gets fired. Well, I, you know, no, I'm sure people do get fired, but they, uh, you know, it's it's more like they find know, places for them. The, the, they they may or they may not. I I don't know about the details of that. What I do know is that the the CEO who we met uh, makes four times what the lowest paid janitor makes, and that all the decisions for the company are made collectively by all the workers, and you know, from small groups to 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 you know, all the way up all the way up to the top. But what's the alternative that you would suggest? How do you take apart capitalism? I'm sorry. How do how would we take apart capitalism? That's the part that has me stumped. I you know outside well, of a collapse. I, think, I, I mean, think the next time it lays an egg, just do nothing. Worldwide capitalism should collapse on its own. Well, yeah, and and uh, that's happened a couple times. <laughs> the last time was in 1929, <laughs> 1930. And, yeah, it, and it, it should never have been regulated at that time and, and kept alive. It should have died then. Well, at that point in time, the two principal options that Franklin Roosevelt was looking at were either fascism, which Mussolini was experimenting with in Europe, uh, or communism, which, uh, of course, the old Soviet Union was experimenting with in Europe. And, and neither of those, in retrospect, worked out all that well. Okay. And, 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 uh, and, of course, uh, many of our top people in, in government and outside of government were fascists at yeah, the time. Yeah. Gar Alperovitz, uh, if I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing his name, but uh, he and I did a, a, a thing here in D.C. about a year ago. He had a book out, and I'm forgetting the title of it, but it's a, he, he, he writes about this a lot. And he pointed out in his talk that there are now more people in the United States who are members of co-ops, and I'm not talking about like your local health food co-op, you know, not consumer members, but worker members. There are more people who are worker members of co-ops in the United States than there are union members in the United States. So the co-op movement has been growing very rapidly. 
Um, the, you know, we, and now there's this new kind of corporation, the B Corporation, the Beneficial Corporation. It's not legal in all states, but uh, some states are moving to, to do that, where you've got a corporation that, that uh, has the interests of the community at heart, and it operates under a different set of regulations than a traditional capitalist corporation. Um, it's a, it, you know, Janet, it's a topic that's uh, worthy of a, of a longer and more thoughtful conversation than, than I have the, 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 the knowledge base for right now. So let me, let me uh, kick this around and maybe we can get Gar on the program or somebody who's, a, you know, or Richard Wolf for that matter. I mean, he comes on our TV show a lot and, uh, and, and, and we can dig into this deeper, but I'm, I'm gonna move along. Janet, thank you for the call. You raise a very, very salient point. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.